we, we talk about technology, but ultimately the technology isn't what should be driving their plans or their roadmaps. It's the bank's differentiation strategy. Welcome to Tech Talks, the podcast brought to you by Nash Squared and hosted by myself, David Savage, that's been bringing you the latest thinking from technology leaders for over eight years. Joining me today, uh, not Akisha or Amber, but Tana, who heads up, um, well, is it fair to say that you head up Sphinx in the US or do you work for the Harvey Nash brand? But let's get this right. I am technically um, under Sphinx. Uh, I do work for Sphinx, but of course we do have support at Harvey Nash here, here in the US. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, you could say that I do do run the the show a little bit. <laughs> uh, look, but, obviously, to anyone who's not familiar with the internal workings of our company, basically Tanner looks after businesses that are small and growing in the U.S. and helping them through their journey. And today's guests are in. Well, I was going to say in the U.S. They're a mix. They're in Canada, in the U.S., Vancouver, and Nashville. And you are based in Nashville. Yeah, absolutely. Here, here, right outside of Nashville, um, probably 10, 15 minutes from from Broadway. So, ah, how often are you on Broadway? <laughs> uh, I, I try to stay away from it. Um, <laughs> it's it's very it, it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, you can spend a lot of money there really quickly too, as well. But um, it's a huge tourist tourist attraction, especially yeah. in, from probably from. April to end of October, when the weather's nice, it's just absolutely packed. Um, it's kind of like a madhouse down there. But um, do recommend. Uh, I don't know, Dave, if you've ever been. Um, I have. Well, I have. I've okay. bar hopped along there and listened to a few different bands. Yeah. So um, I'm sure. Well, you know how, how fun it could be. Um, the music's yeah. fairly, I'd say, really good. I'd say a little, a little bit spoiled here <laughs> with with live music. So, but I, I swear everyone in Nashville has has some connection in some way to the music industry, even if they're not involved in it themselves. Nashville, it's it's a very large city, but at the same time, I, we, a group of friends, I, we always talk about how small it actually is. Um, everybody knows, you know, a person here, a person there. So there's a lot of connections. Um, me personally, I, I don't have a ton. <laughs> um, it, it's probably because I'm not musically talented at all. <laughs> Never mind. I... You can appreciate it even if you're not necessarily that talented. And uh, anyway, that aside, set some context. Um, we're not obviously talking about music today. We're talking about Core 10, fintech offering uh, in North America. So we'll play the interview with Jeff and Joel and then myself and Tanner will have some comments on it afterwards. Sounds good. So today I'm joined by Jeff and Joel from Core 10. Thanks for giving up some time. Yeah, thank you for having us. Um, Jeff, you're you're in Vancouver, so it's probably quite early in the morning, right? You know, it's not too bad. Um, just after 9 a.m. here. So I already had my coffee and a bit of breakfast. So, uh, And Joel, you're, you're, you're in Nashville, so lunchtime, right? Yep, yep. Uh, 11.15 here. So getting ready to have some lunch. <laughs> well, look, look, before we get into anything else, uh, do you want to explain who Core 10 are to our listeners? Yeah. Jeff, do you want to take it or do you want me to take that? If you want to close the gaps of what I missed. I mean, have been, been here yeah. longer, so... At a, a summary level, I'd say at Core 10, really, our, our mission is to be the, the trusted easy button for, for banks on their digital transformation and innovation journey. Uh, we work with banks of a variety of sizes to, to really help them um, succeed from a technology perspective. Um, I, within Core 10, my role is I, I lead our accrue business, um, and we, we really took the years of experience we had in core integration development um, and applied it to taking our accrue product to market, which is our lending and account opening platform. So think of a, a platform that's fully digital for uh, loan origination, as well as for opening deposit accounts, um, which we launched just this past year as part of the ICBA ThinkTech Accelerator. Um, and really where we differentiate is our, our pre-built connectivity um, to a variety of cores and FinTechs. So when I say cores, I mean the core banking applications that banks utilize for managing their their, their business overall, their deposits, their loans, um, as well as within our accrued platform, managing those kind of complex account opening and lending business processes through a single platform for both bank employees and their customers. So that's really kind of my role and, and where where we fit within Core 10. But Joel, anything I, I missed there that you want to add in terms of some of the other pieces on the Core 10 side? So I've actually been with Core 10 for almost five years now. So we got started 
about six, seven years ago with the company. Um, started off doing professional services, building out custom integrations, API connections with the large banking cores, building out new lending products, et cetera. So about two years ago is when Jeff and the team came on, started building out a crew, went through that accelerator, have seen absolutely tremendous growth with the accrue product. But as we built that, you know, obviously the, the chassis of the engine um, is on the integration side. So having integrations, we started getting requests from banks like, can we have that as a standalone product as well? Like we need an infrastructure platform. Uh, the cores are a challenge to work with. We want to be able to innovate and own the transformation journey ourselves. So actually took that kind of chassis of integrations out and have built uh, our own kind of offering around that as well called Mesh. So with Core 10, we've got professional services, you know, come do anything you need to from custom development, API integrations with FinTech to our account opening solution built with Salesforce, which is a crew to the, you know, the API integration solution, which we're branding kind of the infrastructure platform at a bank called Mesh. So two products and services that go hand in hand really well together. Now, it might be the really obvious question, but as a business founded in 2016, as you said there, in recent years, lots of growth, lots of interest, I would assume in part driven by the pandemic, certainly in the UK, kind of if I have a look at our own banking sector, particularly where it comes to um, the retail banking sector, uh, obviously the fact that people were not able to visit banks and they were they were switching over to digital services help drive a lot of transformation in the sector. Is that the same picture there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we've we've been having the same conversation, I feel like, for two to three years now about the pandemic and how you know, people aren't coming into the branch anymore. Like we had one client who, you know, to generate a new account number, actually had to go into the back vault, pull out a checkbook and write down the account number. It's not going to work during a pandemic. Nobody's going into the branch. So we've absolutely seen massive growth on the account opening side where everything's digital, everything flows seamless. It's an easy solution to work um, and get out the door quickly. Totally agree. And it was really something really just kind of accelerated an existing trend. So it wasn't necessarily news, but the, the pandemic, pandemic truly did force digital upon a lot of institutions before they were ready and kind of... Uh, we, we've really seen that growth just due to that in terms of the, the increased adoption of people realizing uh, within the banking sector that to, to remain competitive and to, to serve their customers, they, they really did need to offer digital solutions that, that could meet their customers' needs. Beyond the obvious then, what requirements did that throw up that have informed actually where this might be evolving beyond just, hey, we need digital services. What what are the challenges that your customers are coming to with? To, sorry, to you today that perhaps you couldn't have foreseen two or three years ago. Jeff looks like he's deep in thought, so I'm going to let him get that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean it's a great question to think about what what questions we didn't foresee. I think what's what's been really interesting when you think about how the the post pandemic world has started to evolve is is kind of more of the hybrid mentality that we're getting into is. I think what we saw pre-pandemic was so much focus on maintaining how can we use technology to almost maintain our existing business processes. During the pandemic, there was almost a phase of how can we do everything in a fully digital way um, and maintain, keep the lights on basically um, while still doing things in a totally different way. And, and now we're kind of getting into a, a post-pandemic world of how can we now you know, fulfill our customer needs um, kind of however we want to, like, in a sense, meet, meet the customers where they are in terms of if, if they want to come in and do something partially within a branch or do something partially digitally or, like, what's the best way that we can serve them kind of given the new kind of omni-channel model that evolved through the pandemic. So I, I think that's what's been, when I look at what we're hearing from our customers now is is we're kind of at a phase where, that level of flexibility and omni-channel experience is kind of table stakes, so to speak. Yeah, that ties in with our, our, our thought process as well and our ethos of meeting a bank where they are in their transformation journey. Banks are still trying to figure out where to meet the customer on their journey as well. I mean, you got to think about the, the population. You've got millennials that want to do everything on the on the phone directly from the tablet, open a new account, never want to have to talk to anybody. 
versus, you know, the older generation or even, you know, um, somewhere in between what some combination of being able to have a relationship with a branch manager and doing larger loans, especially on the more of the boutique or commercial side of it. Like, so balancing the, the digital and the customer touch, I think is going to be important kind of going forward. Now, one thing I was, I was keen to, to find out, I suppose a bit more, was, was the mentality behind the business. Um, Jeff, we mentioned that you were in Vancouver. You haven't been in Vancouver for, for the majority of your career. I mean, you've been in San Francisco, you spent a little bit of time in London. Uh, and obviously, Joel Nashville Franklin as as a part of the states is is booming, and a lot of people flocking there, and lots of innovation going on. What do you think that brings your business? What what does Core Ten gain from that blend? I suppose of different locations and perspectives that perhaps might not have been possible were you not a remote first business. Um, I think what's really interesting when you look at the the broader team within Core Ten is. The amount and variety of diversity we have uh, and different experiences um, that people have had interacting with banking kind of globally in terms of expectations of what's possible and and what they can almost expect. Like we have people on our team who are comparing their experience in in Europe, in Asia, in South America, even uh, in terms of what they're experiencing uh, in the U.S. I think sometimes we get caught up a little bit in the U S about kind of what the, the mega banks are offering and just looking at those digital experiences without understanding maybe from a global perspective where we're, there's, there's a lot more disruption in banking, especially in consumer banking and other cultures. I'd say um, the U S in a sense has been a bit of a late adopter and in, in some ways really. Um, but um, I think it's it's been valuable for sure to have those different perspectives within our team because it's helped us almost shape what's possible within our product to bring different ideas of of how we can innovate and provide new capabilities um, to to our customers. So, Joel, I'd be interested from a from a technology perspective because obviously vision, strategy, the tactics for the business. There, you you know, you listen to Jeff and he talks about the fact that perhaps you were lagging a little bit in some regards as, as a sector behind other markets, but certainly mm-hmm. that's, that's closed. How has technology played a role in closing that? And I suppose there's a lot of green space to move into, but perhaps presenting opportunities that, that aren't available to some markets if you're looking at the UK or Europe. Yeah, I mean, that's been a challenge that we've seen in the US is you know the infrastructure that banking has been built on is, uh, is decaying, essentially. You've got these massive costs or some banks are still running mainframes. I don't, I'm too young to know what a mainframe is, quite honestly. So you've got the, the hurdle of, you know, you got to keep the lights on. You got to keep the bank running as it's, you know, been operating. You've had this massive shift in technology from, you know, on-prem managing servers yourself to the cloud with AWS, GCP, um, and Azure. So Banks are trying to understand where it fits. Technology has just ramped up exponentially in the past three to five years. I mean, now we have blockchain technology uh, has been hitting the market, crypto. You're starting to get uh, AI has been a massive topic. And everything's hitting kind of all at once. So banks are still trying to juggle where they are, how they want to leverage the technology. So that's just one of the challenges that we're seeing. And then just the mentality as well with some of the banks. Of, I was talking to one bank last week and, you know, it was, I uh, forget who it was, but there were two, you know, there was an older gentleman who I think maybe was president and a younger guy. And the older gentleman looked at uh, his colleague and said, you know, apparently we need a, I need an online account opening solution. I'm like, well, absolutely you do. <laughs> it's 2023. How are you not opening accounts digitally anymore? So, you know, these are all challenges that we're working with meeting banks where they are. Um, you know, ultimately the technology is going to be a major either um, opportunity for banks to get on board with new technology, new features, new functionality, or, you know, essentially go the way of the dinosaur. I think I'd, I'd note there, I think Joel hit on a really key point there that historically, at least in the, the U.S. banking sector, um, there's been such a dependency on 
on the major core providers for providing them their technology where they kind of had to historically take the solutions offered by the cores without a lot of flexibility or choice. So really banks haven't had a lot of opportunity to pursue a best of breed fintech strategy um, or, or any type of uh, strategy in a sense due to some of those limitations. Um, and it's not to say that the core providers don't offer good solutions all the time, like they're they're t- tried and true, but, but at the same time, um, by buying every product offered by a core provider, inherently you're gonna get an average solution um, and it really limits your ability to differentiate um, through technology. Um, so that's that's some an area that we've really focused in, in terms of our businesses at, at Core 10 is, is how we can help banks embrace that best of breed uh, strategy by providing that fintech connectivity. And banks aren't they're not, they're not built the same either. You know, you've got a two hundred million dollar bank with with a small budget versus a two billion dollar bank versus a twenty billion like exponentially different between different uh, sizes in the community banking space. One question I just wanted to ask very quickly, and, and forgive me, it's an indulgent one on our business's point of view, but you mentioned that Nashville is a, is a hub for your business and, and you were remote first. And obviously it's an interesting case because you've gone through growth and as a business, you are starting to evolve. And my colleagues in Sphinx on the ground in the States are dealing with a, with a lot of startups. It's always interesting to know at what point you begin to think, well, hang on a minute, we, we do need a hub. We do need something that that we can coalesce around and what that might do to change the culture of your business as it begins to scale? It's an interesting question. <laughs> so it's been great having that hub. You know, you centralize meetings, you get the leadership team that comes in, uh, communicates. You lose a lot on a remote meeting, especially if you do day in, day out for 365 days a year. So again, having that human touch, human interaction has been fantastic for our business. You know, we have quarterly meetings, planning sessions, we touch base weekly. So getting that rhythm has been absolutely great for us as an organization. And then getting that face-to-face, you know, reading body language, having lunch, breaking bread together, um, really, you know, creates more of a community aspect to it instead of just we're all robots on a, on a screen. And Yeah, I think I'd know too, our, our business has such a kind of strong history of engagement with the communities, both in the, the Nashville, Tennessee area, as well as in the, the broader West Virginia region. So we have a, a lot of deep ties and, and history within West Virginia as well. So that's that's really shaped our culture, um, I think, in a lot of ways for the better, just having a lot of those deep ties and relationships with, with folks in those regions. Um, so I, I love getting out there when I can. And a, a last question. And to both of you, it might be the same answer. It might be a slightly different answer. But we're very lucky here to be able to talk to a lot of digital leaders, um, get to quiz you a lot, of, a lot of questions. But this is a community. When you find yourself out there, maybe going to conferences, maybe meeting other people, what are the questions that you want to ask them at the moment that help inform you where the sector's moving? The big one that I always like to ask um, when I'm talking to to community and regional banks um, is really where where they see themselves differentiating currently as well as moving forward. Um, I think it's, we, we talk about technology, but ultimately the technology isn't what should be driving their plans or their roadmaps. It's the bank's differentiation strategy. Uh, that's what should be driving the technology roadmap, the initiatives they're pursuing um, and how they're allocating their, their time and their capital. Um, I like to ask that question because if, in my pers- from my perspective, if you, if you truly have a defined competitive strategy whether it be a regional strategy, an industry-focused strategy, product-focused strategy. Um, when you partner with a company like Core10 and utilize their solutions like Accru and Mesh, um, it's really that technology infrastructure that can allow banks um, to really execute on their strategies. But, but ultimately, it, it's that differentiation strategy that's key. So I, I really like to kind of quiz and push banks almost a little bit on how they foresee themselves differentiating and, and winning based on on how the world and the technology and the ecosystem is evolving. Yeah, I think I take a slightly different approach. I actually go in, like, what are their challenges that they're facing? Is it, you know, acquiring new deposits, new loans, and then honing in on, you know, how technology can solve that challenge. And then even what opportunities they're exploring, you know, 
like Jeff said, you know, they're going to have a niche that they want to focus on where they see opportunities. So with the way that we work and we work across, you know, all FIs, fintechs, we see different strategies that other banks or fintechs are, are deploying. So based on where they are, what their challenges are, uh, and the direction that they want to head, we can actually make great suggestions for them, even if, um, you know, we can ultimately help them on that decision journey as well. Look, it's been a pleasure to speak to both of you. Sounds like an exciting time at Core 10. I uh, hope it continues to to go well and the, the products that you're rolling out to, to the market enable you to, to continue to help transform their services. Um, so thank you for spending some time with me. Absolutely. We appreciate the time today. Yep. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Right. First time on the podcast. So, um, Let's see. Look, you've, you've had a chance to listen to the interview a couple of times. What stood out to you? Uh, you know, I really, the thing that stood out me to, to the most is just the digital transformation, right? Um, mm-hmm. You know, how, how fintech it really has been booming um, and the, the need for a lot of, you know, financial institutions to really modernize their, their you know, their tech stack, their, their data. Um, you know, a, a lot of it has, after listening to the core 10, um, you know, that they had to personally go in, go into vaults and, you know, fill out fiscal forms. And um, that was really the big, big takeaway for me, um, really kind of how FinTech the industry um, itself, you know, in the past, it was, I would say, probably fairly behind other other industries in the technology um, space. Um, so that was probably one of the biggest takeaways that I had. I think it's interesting that they talk about, you know, having to meet the bank where they are. And I think... They say that quite early on in the interview, and I can't remember if it's Jeff or, or Joel. And then there's an anecdote towards the end of the story about someone who's quite old school. You know, apparently we need to open digital account services. And it's like, yeah, well, obviously. Um, and the, so the banks are quite early on in that transformation journey. And they're having to meet their customers where they are. And the customers are a lot further down the line. So it's, they talk about that balancing digital and customer touch. And getting that right will be keen. And it does seem to be the fact that, that obviously organizations organizations are under a huge pressure to um, modernize and to digitize their services. And customers, especially in fintech in the US, it would seem, are quite a bit ahead of where those organizations are. So they're having to make a real big leap very, very quickly. You know, like you said, it's kind of the, the old school um you know, thinking um, there with some of the some of the institution and what's going on, but um, I think I think the reason with that is I, I feel s- some of the leaders in the fintech industry or the financial industry, I feel like they're going to lose an element of the human touch um, once they, um, you know, if they do go fully digital. Are there certain parts of the country that are more kind of you know because obviously the US is. A collection of states and the states all, you know, are, are very, very different in, in in themselves. I think it's interesting that we've got this business that are kind of a remote first business, but Nashville would seem to be their focus. I would, I would have assumed that perhaps, and correct me, this might be an ignorant and ill-informed comment, that New York perhaps would already be quite a long way down this line. And perhaps some of the states in more rural areas, maybe the Midwest or something, aren't as advanced on this on this journey. I would say, yes, you're probably spot on right there. Um, so, you know, in, in the bigger cities, of course, tech stacks well, well developed, um, you know, and then it kind of trickles out um, into more of the rural areas. Now, personally, I, I can attest to this. I grew up in a very, very small, small town in um, southeastern Virginia um, and our, di- our banks, it was very much still you have to fill out paper forms. I'm still just uh, a few years ago. Um, granted, I, I live in Tennessee now, so I, I can't can't attest to it. But yes, um, so I, I think you hit the nail on the head there um, with you know the rural rural areas really kind of take take it takes a while for them to catch up um, to the you know big urban populations. And look, you're based in in Nashville. We asked um, Core Ten. Why Nashville? But what do you think is going on there right now? I mean, you get to the opportunity to talk to a number of different businesses um, in and around the area. Kind of over the last year, what appears to have been kind of the focus and the reason for the, 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 this excitement, I suppose, is is being fueled around the region. Well, um, I'd say first and foremost, probably the most most obvious observation here. We Nashville, it's 
it, it has been booming. Population's been driving through the roof. Um, you, when you have companies such as Amazon and Oracle and, you know, Fortune top 20 companies, you know, of that stature that are, you know, bringing headquarters here, I think that speaks for itself. Um, you know, it's, you know, there's lots of things to do here. I think it's just a big people attraction. Um, a lot of college graduates want to want to come here um, and live in Nashville. So you have good talent for these companies to, you know, you know, choose, um, you know, at an entry level and kind of train them and, and guide them on, on their, their way. Um, so, but, you know, the, the tech scene really has been booming here, here in Nashville as well. Um, you know, over the last year, um, it's been, you know, a lot of funding here in the startup and scale up space as well. Um, so it's, you know, look, looking promising, looking like it, you know, may become a, a tech hub, pretty large tech hub here, here in the States. Well, look, I appreciate you taking the time to join us and, and to have a chat about uh, Core 10. I'm sure that we'll have you back on the podcast um, soon, Tanner, given that, you know, myself, Akish and Amber are on the wrong side of the pond and, and don't really know what we're talking about. Um, so thanks for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Thank you for having me on.